questions is, is the V6 3.2 in the Isuzu a interference engine? Uh, because when you're setting the timing, you've got to clock the heads. So I've got a head here. I've got an engine block from a 2000 Isuzu Rodeo 3.2 V6. I'm going to take a look. I'm going to measure the valves as we turn them here now. And then we're going to also check the pistons and we'll measure any clearance issues that we might have there at uh, top dead center. And we will find out once and for all if this is an interference engine and how much damage can be done. So let's have a look and we'll get started here. Okay, so there's the bottom here. Obviously, four valves a cylinder. These are actually really cool little V6s. They're very simple because there's no variable timing or anything on them. It is just a nice, straightforward, potent engine, actually. They make like, what, 210, 215 rated horsepower? Uh, so it's just, there's room for improvement for sure, and it's all aluminum. It's light, it's small. We'll have a look here. Fourteen here. Okay, so let's give her a crank. Oh, you can see it's coming up. Okay, that feels like it's at extension there. And the ruler is definitely up. So let's see how up it actually is. I'm gonna try to get a good caliper reading. So we're zeroed out. Just grab the edge of that and down. Okay, there. Let me extend and come down. Okay, so there I have the reading. So 3.16 is what I got from that. Let's just double check it against this one. And I would say it's about the same, give or take a thousand. And what about these ones? This one doesn't look like it went as high. Maybe I better rotate that. Anyways, 3.16 appears to be how much this valve extends past the top of the head or the bottom of the head here. It's clearly higher than the ruler by the whole width of the valve. So I'm just going to rotate here a little bit and make sure that we're at full extension on all of these. Click this around. Everything. Okay, so everything's flat again. You can see when you clock it, all the valves shut. So when it hits that clock, everything's shut here, which is kind of interesting to note, which means that, yeah, you wouldn't have to worry about the engine spooling over if the head snapped to a clock. So in other words, if you blew the timing belt, while driving, the head would snap to this position because it wouldn't have anything moving it and all the valves would stay shut, which would be amazing for the engine because then you wouldn't be destroying the engine as you were fiddling with it. So there, now we can see these center, center piston is coming up. So I'm gonna rotate that up. Okay, still going up. I'd say that's at full bar. I'm expecting the same. Not quite the same there, but. But, no, it's not that much there. And I drag this over. It's just a slight bump. Especially on these, what is this, the exhaust side? Especially on the exhaust side. Those. Not that crazy. Let's just run this around once and have a look. Keep your eye on how everything moves here and 
give you an idea of what you're working with when you're fixing these engines. Okay, so it did go up more there. Okay, so that is the peak. Touch it backwards. Okay, right there. Let's double check this measurement again, just for fun. Since we're here now, let's be thorough. So I'm gonna extend this past and then push it down. Boom. 3.32. I would say, I would say that right there. So actually 3.27 was the one on those valves there. So that's probably what it should have been there too. Let's do one more rotation and catch one of these exhaust valves. At. So I'm just gonna rotate around and keep, just have a look at everything here. So yeah, see, clock, boom, everything shut. And then boom, final engine. It's also neat to note that when that's intake, that's exhaust, of course, that's how engines work, that makes sense. And I'm just gonna check these valves here. Okay, that's full extension. Let's take one more measurement. That way we're positive on what's going on. So start high, push it down. Boom, contact is made. See, that one's higher. 3.2 on that one as well. Which again, considering the lifters aren't oiled up, we have to assume there's some air here, right? So we'll go with three to 3.2 lift because that seems to be what we got all across the board. All right, so good information to note there. Now we know that these valves, when they clear the flat part of the, the bottom of the head here, they're going up about 3.2 millimeters, according to my rough measurements here. Now the head gaskets that you put on, I did a big look on those the other day and they're like 1.15 millimeters thick on average. 